There used to be two kinds. There used to be ADHD and it used to be ADD. And the ADD basically means they dropped the hyperactivity from the, the nomenclature or the naming of it, right? And what that meant was that some people will have uh, attention issues and may not have hyperactivity. So you can still have ADHD without being hyperactive, which is a big common misconception. All the time, I, I, did, a, I did a video recently where I was saying about how... Um, I could, you know, somebody say to me, like my girlfriend will say, can you go to the kitchen and, and get me a pen? I'll be like, okay, I'll literally walk through the door and be like, I have no idea what I'm doing. Like, I have no idea. And it's because your brain is trying to look for other things to keep it occupied because it's always wanting to move on to the next thing. And that's the hyperactivity or the attention issue. <laughs> yeah, it's really good. Actually, I forget things so much so that I have to use my iPhone to get Siri to tell me when to take my medication. In order to focus your attention on something, you have to be able to quiet your mind and remember or to recall, right? But with ADHD, our mind is going a thousand miles an hour. We're thinking about a lot of things at once, right? You're not just thinking about the thing in front of you. You think about everything. You think about what you ate last Tuesday. You know, you're thinking about like, what's the next cool episode of like Minecraft that, that release is going to happen. You know, you, you're always thinking about the new thing and the, the next thing or the next thing. So you just forget. It's not because you're lazy or it's not because you're um, you're bad at remembering it's just because your brain doing other stuff there's there's two two really good ways i use um i use these little things uh like small writing journals so i can write things down that i need to remember um but you've got to remember to check this so unless it's part of your daily routine that you're going to pick up this book and look inside it um like bullet journey and stuff like that um then the other thing you can do is you could use uh your ipad or your iphone because like we all have ipads right like who doesn't have an ipad and you just say hey siri or hey whatever um remind me to oh my phone's going hey, remind me to do this that and the other on this day and siri will go ahead and tell you to do it on that day it will give you an alert so i use reminders on my apps but here's a little uh, kind of takeaway if you don't have an ipad you don't have an iphone but you do have something like Alexa in your house, right? You can always ask the Alexa to remind you to do something. That works really well. I'm literally just doing a video right now on smart home technology for ADHD and autism. ADHD can be a, a fantastically good thing. It's got the ability to um, uh, create what we call hyperfocus, where you can be so interested in something that you become um, overly in engaged in it. So say you really like Minecraft, but you could be really, really good at Minecraft. And because ADHD allows you to really think about something you're very interested in. You could go really deep into Minecraft and like, that would be the only thing you want to think about. And you could become an expert on Minecraft. That's cool. ADHD helps me learn because I'm wanting to do, okay, this is a really good one. I want to work out all the time, right? Because when we get older, we're not as young and fit as we used to be. So we have to kind of go to the gym or we have to run or do kind of stuff like that. But I find it really unproductive. Like I'm like, oh, I want to run, but I also want to learn stuff, right? And so our brains are always wanting to do things, ADHD brain. So what I do is I combine running with listening to audio books and I'm always learning as I'm running. So I'm doing two things at once. So it's really cool because you get to do all the energy running and stuff like that. Keep yourself fit. So, you know, so we, we don't go old and decrepit, but you also get to learn cool stuff because I can download audiobooks or podcasts and learn as I go. I think like, you know, th there's a thing about having, so when you have ADHD or autism, you have a neurodivergent brain type, right? And your life has already changed from day one. You're different to other people who are neurotypical, which means that their brains work in a typical manner. But when you have ADHD, your brain works a little bit differently. So I think it changes your life without you even knowing it. But I think having the having the diagnosis kind of come to, to life and you look at it and you go, wow, you get to then change your life in a good way where you can add cool things like reminders or you can go running and listen to audiobooks. I think that's a cool thing. Seeing me checking my phone a thousand times and playing with my dog here. <laughs> I actually have this this uh, squishy ball on my desk, which is a, a dice uh, from Dungeons and Dragons because I'm really sad and I play Dungeons and Dragons. And uh, so I, I squished this ball to kind of keep my, keep my mind from wandering and being occupied so I can actually do some work but yeah always wondering which is kind of a good thing um but it's fun i mean i wouldn't say it's a bad thing i guess it's just the luck of the dice you know uh, just happens randomly it's all down to the way the brain uh, fuses its neurological paths together when you're being uh, created which is kind of cool right i guess it's it, how i would say it, it's all down to god <laughs> it's out of my hands man you know some people might say that like dna kind of carries uh adhd and autism and stuff like that but i don't know i mean like who knows we we haven't got that far into technology yet so we don't really know uh adhd is a it's called a develop uh, a neurological developmental condition which is uh grows with you um it expands with you so it may change over time but it'll never go away you can't cure it but you can definitely treat it and um 
you should be proud of who you are and having ADHD as part of who you are. So that's a cool thing, right? Getting to have a dog to help you with your daily tasks. There you go. Now, what is good about having ADHD is having to be able to have multiple projects on the go at once and actually do all of them, which means that, you know, and you might laugh, like I, I am writing a book right now and I'm also learning two languages and I'm also building a marketing funnel, which you probably don't know what that is, but it's something very complex. And I'm also making videos on editing them and I run another company. So I do all these things at once and it's because I got ADHD. Hey, if I was boring and I didn't have ADHD, sorry, anybody who doesn't have ADHD, then I wouldn't be able to do all these cool things, right? So <laughs> it's kind of like, it's really fun in that way. Well, they can think what they like. I know who I am. And if they're real friends and they know who you are, hey, look, if your friends can't accept who you are, then they're not real friends. You have to have people around you who like psych you up, you know, who are excited for you to be there. And if that means they accept you like getting up and moving around and playing with fidget gadgets and stuff like that, then so be it. I respect my friends for who they are. And I hope they do the same for me because what's happening is your, 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 your ADHD brain is wanting to kind of like do stuff all the time. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like that's why it's hard to sit still. Right. And you want to kind of get up and move around or play with your dog <laughs> or whatever, you, have to, you know, all that kind of cool stuff. But if you've got something to keep it occupied, like, you know, if you were like cycling at your desk, but you were like in class, you'd be able to learn the stuff in class because your ADHD wandering brain would be like taken up by the cycling or the fidget toy or the whatever else you're doing, you know, like the balance board or whatever. And that's why it's helpful. So for parents, when the child or, or, or your kid is, um, is frustrated because of something to do with ADHD, all they need is validation, which means that you need the mums and dads to go, oh, I get it. I know why you're frustrated. It's okay. We all get frustrated, right? And understand that it's just frustration. There's nothing else. You're not a bad person. And for the person who has the frustration, it's hard. It really is hard. But it's the best thing I've learned to do when I'm really frustrated when I have ADHD is to just take in a deep breath, hold it, yeah. and let it all out. And when you do that, you kind of feel better. I know it sounds really stupid, but it does really work.